Hi, it's Ryan. This is not a planned out video, but it's something that was on my mind today I wanted to share with you. You know, um, I'm uh, still keeping in touch with several of my uh, former students diagnosed with ADHD or what we used to call then as Asperger's. Now we call autism. And, you know, one of the things of my former students who are now in their early 30s, I found the general theme of, amongst the ones who are doing really well in life is this. Their parents did not accommodate them, meaning their parents did not engage in parental accommodation. They didn't bend over backwards to keep their kids comfortable at all times. Their kids had expectations on them. Their parents didn't listen to their noise and didn't feed into the emotional manipulation and so on. And because of that, they are now functioning adults whose lives don't look any different than anybody else their age, really. You know, when I used to uh, speak at autism conferences, I would always bring this book with me. And the book is called The Loving Push. It's by Dr. Temple Grandin, who uh, is a very well-known uh, autism author. And I would hold the book up when I present and I would say, if you're going to buy one book about autism, let this be the book. And the reason why is because in the book, Dr. Grandin talked about, you know, don't engage in this permissive, indulgent parenting and don't accommodate kids. And based on my experience, that's what produces healthy, successful adults with good mental health outcomes. On the other hand, the research shows that the permissive indulgent parenting approach does not produce positive mental health outcomes. And you can you can Google this and search for it. There's decades of research on this. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because today in my Facebook feed popped up, you know, one of these parenting summits that I'm sure you you all see. And essentially it was an, an you know, a permissive indulgent parenting summit for uh, kids with neurodevelopmental for parents of kids with neurodevelopmental differences. You know, and I thought to myself, you know, they're using these, you know, terms like pathological demand avoidance and this and that. And there's no longitudinal studies on this. There's no longitudinal study saying if you parent your child, you know, in this way, this is going to be the outcome because this, you know, pathological demand avoidance is a it's not even a diagnostic label it's a description of a subset of people with autism which is accurate but there's no evidence showing that having no placing no demands on them is healthy for them in any way so i just wanted to say we're living in a really crazy time right now where professionals are ignoring research data and I could speak about this forever, but I just want you to just keep in mind this one thing that, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And my former students who I met when they were in middle school or high school who are doing really well now, they're doing really well because of their parents. And their parents, again, did not baby them. They didn't enable them. They didn't say, oh, well, he can't handle that. You know, he has ADHD or autism. They didn't treat them as disabled. And that's the bottom line. So I just want you to think about that because you're going to hear more and more of this noise pointing to this permissive indulgent parenting approach. And in my experience of the adults with ADHD and autism who I know now, that's not what their parents did with them. And I'm going to leave you with this one last thing. Um, the, actually, the school where I met my former students at, um, you know, years ago, I was running the uh, summer program there. And I got a phone call one time of, you know, a parent who said, um, do you have anything for my 28 uh, year old? And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, this is a camp for elementary and middle schoolers. And he said, well, I have a 28 year old who doesn't leave their room all day. And it just so happened that that day um, my son had an appointment with his psychiatrist. So we went and I said to her, I got this phone call when I was at work today of a guy asking me if his 28 year old could come to my camp. I said, have you ever you know, got calls like that? And she said, I get them every week. And one of the things I want you to understand is that people whose children are, are what we call non-emerging adulthood, meaning they're not functioning as adults or what people often call failure to launch, a term I don't like, um, there's no Facebook group for those people. And you're not going to hear their stories because they feel guilt and shame about where their adults are right now. And, you know, we should be empathetic towards them. But I just want you to know that, you know, you're not going to hear from them because they're not in a good place and don't have something happy to share with you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Have expectations for your kids. Don't treat them as disabled. And remember that they're probably more capable than you realize. And I had a mom say that to me today because um, in working with her, you know, one of the things she said to me was, you know, everything that I've learned from you and your membership site is the opposite of what we've been taught before. And I said, well, basically, because you're treating your son as he's capable now and he's showing you how capable he is. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.